Shalom Mishpaka and Shalom to the tribes of Yeshurah scattered abroad. Welcome to the next exposition on Yahusha, this time around on his death and resurrection. I'm going to clear up the myths by the grace of the Ruach, um, by Yahuwah's compassion on the stories that have been circulating concerning his death and resurrection. Actually, the same myths you're being told in the churches. Now, can you turn with me to the book of Matetiahu, chapter 28, from verse 1? Let us dissect this together. Now, in my version, this is what it says. I know your version says differently. I will get to that. It said, Now, after the Shabbat, toward dawn on one of the Shabbatots, Shabbatot is the plural of Shabbat. Okay. Miriam from Magdala and the other Miriam came to see the tomb. And see, there was a great earthquake, for a messenger of Yahuwah came down out of the Shamayim and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Just as I read this, that you're going to the tomb, my heart burned. Now I know in your own version, in your own English Bible, it said on the first day of the week that they went and they found that the stone was rolled away. Okay, all right. Now, one thing I want to let you know is this. You're an adult and you've got brains. The same brain that Yahuwah put in your religious leaders, in your shepherds, pastors, with the same brain you've got. Now, I want us to read this together and analyze it sincerely, honestly, with the brains that Yahweh has given to us and with his work and see the truth for ourselves. Okay. Now, according to what you were taught in the churches, or we were all taught, because I was also taught the same thing, we were told that our Mashiach, Jesse, died and he resurrected exactly on the third day. It was said emphatically, is it not so? Now, in my version, in my scriptures, it is written one of the Shabbats, Shabbatot. Because remember I told you that Shabbatot is the plural of Shabbat. And one of the Shabbats, Miriam and the other Miri, they went to the tomb to see him. Okay, please let me, before I comment, let me also read Mark, Marcus chapter 16, okay, from verse 1. I just only take two scriptures through them. Um, to chap, um, scriptures and then read he said and when the shabbat was passed to just it's just a confirmation for you miriam from magdala and miriam of yaakov mark marcus chapter 16 from verse 1 okay and miriam of yaakov and shiloma bought spices to go and anoint him okay and very early morning on one of the shabbat they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. I will stop there. So you see confirmation. My Bible is saying Shabbat, one of the Shabbats that went. I know you're saying on the first of the week. But I'll start with my own scripture to say it, to, to break it down before I come to yours. Now, according to the fourth commandment, Yahuwah commanded Yeshua not to break, not to dishonor the Sabbath day. That that's the day we should do no work, right? And you know that the Yahudim, they keep the Torah. So you can see very clearly that in this case, my scripture was not um, totally, did not totally say the truth. That's a lie. Emphatically. Because if, remember what I said, if I told you, if the disciples of Yahusha, they were with him, they were keeping the Torah. Because you could see that Yahusha was going to the synagogue and um, preaching. It was one of the days he, he preached, uh, um, he spoke on Yeshayahu and all those things. You can see that they still kept the Shabbat. Do you understand? So this means totally that that particular line in my scripture was not is not true. They say one of the Shabbats. They didn't say give a specific day. They just said it in general. Do you understand? This is different. Now the only part that is true is that they said it in general. Because why? The soldiers, the only people that saw the day, the exact day, the tomb was broken and that Yahusha came out from the tomb. Yeah, the soldiers that was posted there by Pilate based on the advice of the religious leaders to guard the tomb and seal the tomb to ensure that it does not resurrect from the dead. 
I believe we all agree that. Why? Because they, the soldiers were there 247 to guard the tomb. They are the ones that will give us 100% accuracy on what actually happened and the exact day the, the, he resurrected from the dead. But now, after the soldiers went to give their encounter to the chief priest, they killed all of them. No matter when they wrote it, that they compensated them. If they gave them money, they gave them money, but they killed all of them. So that's that truth, that part of history, where nobody will ever know for sure what really happened. Do you understand? So that they can be able to put a lot of insinuations in the gospel and make people believe a lie. So now, it's not possible for a follower of Yahusha to break the Shabbat. Because, number one, he made it very clear that he did not come to destroy the Torah or the Nebuchadnezzar, but he came to fulfill it. And he taught them how they should obey the Torah, the parts that they were not doing well. And if you watch his teaching, he did not talk much about Shabbat. The only time mentioned about Shabbat was when he was doing good on Shabbat. And then they were now complaining and say, look at you, how can you do this on Shabbat? They say, but you yourself, if your goat, if your cattle falls into a pit, are you going to leave it to the following day? Will you not take it out of the pit? Now, how much more this person that needs healing? Do you understand? That's, therefore, I say to you, it's good to do good on the Shabbat. That's the only comment he said on Shabbat. Meaning that the working aspect, anything aspect that does not glorify Yahuwah, you shouldn't do it on the Shabbat. This shows very clearly that Yahusha was pro-Shabbat. He was for Shabbat. So therefore, there's no way his followers can break the Shabbat. Because they were keeping it before he came. And they continued keeping it after he came. And we continue to keep it after he has gone. Do you understand? So that side is cleared now. Now let's look at your scripture. You said on the first day of the week that they went and they found that the stone of the tomb was already rolled away. And in your version, it is written like as if it is just the next day after the Shabbat. And that is what is implied there. Now, if you backtrack, because I don't want to start reading, because I don't want to quote a lot of scriptures just want to go to the facts if you backtrack you see that it was said that he died a day before the shabbat and the religious leaders we are so concerned that they wanted him buried taken out of the stake before the shabbat so that he would not defy the shabbat because that is their customs nobody remains on the stake to the shabbat that person must be taken down but if the person has been nailed to the stake on any other day of the week it's okay to leave the person till vultures eat the person depending on the punishment that has been meted out for the person but in the case of yahusha he was nailed to the stake on a friday it was said preparation day and preparation day is friday the day before the shabbat he was nailed to the stake now, if they are saying that he died for three days and three nights and he resurrected on the third day, now let's do the calculation together. We all know that other day have 24 hours. So now let's assume now that he died around 5, 4, 4 p.m. Friday. 4 p.m. Friday to 4 p.m. Shabbat, that is 24 hours, that's one day. 4 p.m. Shabbat to 4 p.m. Sunday, that's two days. Now, in your Bible, they said very early in the morning, the first day of the week. Can you see your Bible is also telling lies? Because it's not even up to three days. That means it's just one day spent in the grave. It's very early in the morning on the first day of the week. Do you see? That spot is also a lie. Then that means now, <clears throat> if now, what do they call it? He, um, we calculate it in four hours. That means the right day he must have resurrected will be on Monday. But hey, Remember, I am not here to fill in the missing caps. Remember what I said, that the original um, form, the original text, a lot of it had degraded. A lot of it was lost. It's just bits and pieces here and there. If you get your hand on the Dead Sea Scrolls and on this Coptic um, text and all these ancient texts, you see that you will not see a lot of things that were written there because of it has been it has biodegraded it has already become old i have lost a lot of text and now the greeks that composed this bible they took the liberty to fill in and put in things that they could not see and change the whole story so now the truth is this mishpaka that's the only people that could tell you for a certain the yahusha resurrected on the third day are dead and the accounts which they gave to them did not enter the scripture. Those women that they said went there on the Shabbat, in my scripture, 
and went there on the first day of the week in your Bible. It's a lie. You can see it's a fabricated story that they put there. This is the truth. And you say, oh, how can I say like that? Okay, let me give you another proof that it is a lie. According to the Jewish or Yahudim tradition, I hate to use the word Jewish. That's insult. According to the Yahudim tradition, we don't have the custom of going to the dead person and re embalming them. That is necromancy and it's against the Torah. Yahuwah says we must have nothing to do with the dead, communicate with the dead and all those things. There is only one set of people that have that custom. And that is the hidden, the idol worshippers, the Greeks, and the Roman Catholic Church. See you in the next video for more explanation on it. Shalom.